Hello, welcome to another lecture for 1060 online. Today what I want to go over, a very important aspect of course, and that's the format. right? And so I'm going to start with MLA first, so if you're only going to do APA you might want to skip about 10 minutes or so. The major differences of course, MLA is for liberal arts, so we're talking about history, literature, education, and then APA is for typically the social sciences and the sciences. Psychology, sociology, criminal justice typically uses APA. Business, most business use APA. And then we have, uh, what else? Chemistry, all the sciences, and those are the ones that would be using APA. So again, in this class you are free to use either one. You could use either MLA or APA. You just want to use it correctly. So I'm going to go over just the brief parameters of MLA. Why I'm starting in the Word document is, of course, this is where it all starts. Oh, okay, so uh, Jessica, correct me. So, okay, so education majors, okay, um, use APA. That's interesting, okay, because secondary ed, uh, when I was in, high, in my college, secondary ed, uh, we used MLA. So, okay, so education, uh, interesting. So, yeah, I guess that's considered a social science more than it is a liberal arts. Interesting. So, they use APA. So, most of you probably will use APA. But I want to start off uh, with MLA because that's probably what you're most familiar with. So, here's our Word page, right? And, of course, some things are different, but here's what we want to do with the parameters. So, for MLA, what we're going to do with our header, right, we need our page number. Page number, of course, goes top of the page and then goes to the top right and then you put your last name the problem though you're not done because what we need to do for this class is set everything to times new roman 12 point so you want to change that font to 12 and then you want to make sure that your font is times new roman the default settings are really stupid for word so just remember your last name and page number go up top for mla the heading is your name the professor's name so I'll just put Dr. Me. Uh, and then the class, so it would be Ingle 1060, and then, or Ing 1060, and then the date used in international and military format. So, and really you do the due date. So for our paper, it should be 26 January 2015. Now, the problem though is, of course, the stupid default settings. It may look like it's in double space but it's not in double space but most importantly let's fix the font right so we go times the roman 12 point and then go up to paragraph or go up to spacing but you see i would suggest going up to paragraph because you have to take care of a couple things right so here you have to switch to double space not multiple space another issue is make sure your spacing is zero 10 point is actually basically triple spacing so you want to set that, and you notice you can see the clear difference. That you know, so again, you want oops, you want to make sure that the spacing is always set to double space, zero point. So uh, after that, you put your title. Make sure everything's for the title is centered. So title of essay, right? And then of course you know you tab and then start writing your essay. But for <coughs> MLA, this is the proper way to have that first page. Every page should have last name page number and the page number should change that's why you want to insert the page number. You want to change the default font make sure it's times in Roman and then you want to change as I said the default setting to make sure that it's before and after spacing is zero and then the line spacing itself is double. So always you know always make sure uh, you do that correctly. For MLA itself let's go to you know Again, in Blackboard, I have APA and MLA, as well as your style guides and all sorts of things, right? So, uh, let's just look at MLA briefly. You will have to use two sources for your essay one. You'll have the essay in the book, or the your article in the book, and then, of course, you'll have the essay that you'll research. So, even though you're only really f researching one source, you still have to have two sources for your essay right so make sure you have the in-text and in-text citation and again you don't need to memorize any of this crap but you know you always have to use it for proper formatting and essay writing so the in-text citation is just basically 
three options for MLA and let me uh, zoom in for you here so what we have here are three options we always have a parenthetical citation the parentheses right with MLA we only keep the citation at the end of any sentence it doesn't matter where the quote is within that sentence you always have the citation at the end whether you're paraphrasing or citing it doesn't matter you always have the citation at the end what changes is the difference between this example and then this example in our first example we have Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by a quote spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions end quote and so what we do is since we have Wordsworth in our sentence we don't need to repeat the author's name in the parenthetical so we put at the end of the sentence, the quote, we finish it up, we put parentheses, and then the period at the end of the sentence. If you don't have the author in the sentence, you do the same thing. You put a quote, and then you put Wordsworth, space, no punctuation, 263, the page number, and then again close the parentheses and put your end sentence punctuation. You still, and this is very important in terms of issues of plagiarism and all sorts of things, right? Whether you're paraphrasing or quoting, you always need to include that citation. So, what you do, whether you're paraphrasing or directly quoting, even if you're paraphrasing, you still follow the same rule. You put the page number at the end of the sentence, or if you didn't include the author name, you would put the author's name and page number. But just note that in MLA, the page citation always goes at the end of each sentence. And when the page number changes, you change, again, you list that in the parentheses accordingly. For the end text citation, or for MLA, what we call works cited page, what you do here is, so let's go up to what you'll probably be looking for, is let's look at the book. Now, for the end text citation, the basic format is simply this right here. Last name, comma, first name, title of the book, city of publication, publisher, year of publication, and then medium. Now, for essay one, what you'll be using is the work in an anthology or collection. So basically, you want to follow this citation format. So what you would do here is your author's last name, comma, first name, period. You put the title of the essay, or in this case, title of the opinion piece. You put the title of our book in italics, because for MLA and APA, shorter works are always in quotes. Longer works are always italicized. You would put the editor, so you would put ED, and then you would put Linda S. Bergman. The city of publication, there's numerous. The city publication is in Boston. Uh, yes, Jessica. Oh, you're no longer seeing my screen? Oh, okay, hold on for a second. Don't know why that happened. Oops. All right, so just to reiterate, because uh, there's a lost connection there. Um, you, what you're going to do for essay one, at least the reference that you pull from the book is going to be in a work in an anthology reference or collection. So you put, and let me get that in the sample as well so you can see, so you put the last name, comma, first name, period, put the title of the essay in quotes, you put the title of the book itself, the textbook in italics, the editor is Linda S. Bergman, city publication is uh, numerous, but you could just put Boston, the publisher is, I think, Pearson, right, and then 2010, I think is the um, year, and then the page range, and then the medium of publication. The medium of publication does not mean book, magazine, and all sorts of things. It is simply print or web. So if you're using the ebook, you would put web or anything, whether it's a journal article, newspaper, or whatever, you, it would be print. Again, if you find the source online, then it's web. If not, you just write print. Right? So if you're using a regular textbook, all you need to write is print. And so just to show you what it looks like, you know, again, last name, first name, period, last name, comma, first name. In the quotations, the title of the article, period, before the quotation. The book itself, italicized, period, after it. ED period for editor, Ben Ralph, period, place of publication, colon, publisher, 
Heinemann, year 2000, page range 24 to 34, period, and then print, period. <clears throat> Notice, too, it is double-spaced and tabbed after the first line. So make, sure, make a note of that, and I'll show you through the sample page what that will look like. But just note that everything in the Works Cited page is double-spaced and tabbed after the first line. And that's going to be the same as APA. So your Works Cited page, you know, should look like this. Centered, Works Cited, everything's double-spaced. After the first line, everything's tabbed until the next new citation. If you notice already, everything is in alphabetical order, so make sure you do that, and that will hold true for APA and MLA. Everything always goes in alphabetical order, everything is always double spaced, and everything is always tabbed after the first line of each citation. And again, you know, I'll show you the differences between APA in a moment, but these are just the basic fundamental rules for formatting an MLA. And so obviously if you have any questions, always email. You know. If not, uh, there will be homework on the format. Uh, so, um, and I already posted that, so uh, make sure you complete the format for both MLA and APA.